room sense iq breaks itself to be all-in-one sensor that will improve your presence-based room automations this sensor combines both millimeter wave and the peer sensor for better accuracy and measurement of movement of individuals let's see how it really does we'll start in a couple of seconds This soon to be released on Crowd Supply RoomSense IQ device has been advertised as all-in-one sensor device. Besides standard millimeter wave and the peer sensor, it also packed some additional technology, such as light sensor, temperature sensor, and humidity sensor. Plus, what also makes it different, this is a local-only device, meaning that no cloud is necessary. It is powered via the ESP Home. And one of the best features of the device is its dashboard, or what it is called SightSense dashboard. Board itself is very compact and nicely designed. It features ESP32 S3 board, which we all know is a newly released board. It has standard millimeter wave radio, which is the one that I already featured in some of my other videos, that can detect up to 5 meters and has field of view of 120 degrees. Peer sensor is used to isolate movement so that it can recognize if this is a movement from the person or, for example, curtains or something similar. I've already mentioned built-in light sensor or ambient light sensor that can be also used in your automations. For example, if there is no movement and it's dark, do something or vice versa. We have temperature and humidity sensor. And this is a really nice addition because it can also improve your automations if you do not already have in that same room additional thermometer or hygrometer. And it is powered via the USB-C cable. Power consumption of the device is around 80 milliamps, which is really nice for a 5 volt power device. And during the testing periods, I was testing it via my power bank because those 10,000 million powers provided a lot of working hours. Test unit that I received featured 3D printed case and a very efficient mount post with the ball joint that allows very easy placement and accurate installation. You can easily point it to whatever direction you need. But I also have to mention that the final product will be featuring molded case. So this was just a test or review unit. Before we look at what's inside the box, let's look at the SightSense dashboard. This dashboard is powered via the ESP32 S3 module that's inside this sensor. It features proxy sense part, which are these three sensors here. This is an occupied or unoccupied sensor from the millimeter wave. This is the current distance between the sensor and the moving object. And this is the information about the peer sensor. It can be also used as a bed sense or bed sensor no, not under the mattress, but in that room, it will turn off the peer functionality and can be used to detect if somebody is sleeping in the bedroom or bed or not. So any micro movements will be registered here. Also, it features this move sense. Move sense allows you to easily detect what areas are currently moving. For example, my hand movement here. And based on that, you can configure thresholds. But easiest part of it is that you can auto-calibrate it with the auto-calibration functionality. After you power the device for the first time, and as I mentioned, you power it by hooking it up to the USB-C or using USB-C cable to hook it up to the 5 volts. You will need to connect to it via the Wi-Fi, either by using your mobile phone or notebook. On your mobile phone, go to the Wi-Fi settings, select Room Sense IQ access point, hook to it. Go to the IP address and the default IP address is 192.168.255.1 and click connect. You will be presented with a screen similar to this one. First thing I recommend and first thing that's recommended in documentation is to update the firmware. The link to the documentation will be down in a video description. Currently documentation contains a link to Google Drive, which I think is something that will change in the future. Download the file from that link and then through the web UI, select that file and click on update firmware. The update process takes one or two minutes and you will be presented with a timer on screen that will tell you that the device will restart. The latest firmware at the time of the recording was the September 8th firmware. Next step, of course, is to connect this device to your Wi-Fi. Type in your SSID for your either IoT network or normal network password and connect. 
after you do that, the device will connect to your network. And once again, you should see something similar to this one. It says that it is connected to my IoT network. This is the IP address, Netmask and the gateway. At the time of the recording, there is no way to provide static IP address, which is something that I normally do for all of my IoT devices, but it's okay. And the last step, of course, if you want to integrate this device into something else, is to provide MQTT settings. I will not be going through the MQTT installation process. I already made a couple of videos on that, especially on running MQTT on a Synology, not directly in Home Assistant, but as a Docker container, because I think that it gives a higher availability, so that even if your Home Assistant for some reason restarts or whatever, when you update it, the devices that use MQTT will still be able to send messages to it and it will wait for Home Assistant to restart to pick up the latest state. But nevertheless, if you're using add-on or any other way of running MQTT, type in your host IP address, port, the standard port is 1883, and I do recommend that you protect your MQTT with the username and password. If nothing else, username and password. And click Submit. After it has been connected, you will see message connected to name of the MQTT server, IP address, and the port it is connected to. If you've done everything correctly and you had similar screen like me, in Home Assistant you should already be presented with all the settings and all the options this sensor provides. This is due to the auto discovery that is implemented in the configuration and it is automatically pulled inside Home Assistant via the MQTT integration. There are a lot of things that you can do, configure and see for this sensor board inside Home Assistant. But we are not going to do that, because now is the time to install the device in a room where the device will be located, permanently, or at least for now. Selecting a place where the sensor will be located is crucial, especially for those occupancy sensors or presence sensors, because they need to be in a position to cover as much room as it's possible. But also I would try to avoid pointing them towards the windows, so find the location in your room, preferably if it's a corner of the room, and position it something similar like this, with a 45 degree angle, so it covers the most space it can. Field of view for the millimeter wave radar is 120 degrees, but for this device it is 100 because it also has to take into account the peer sensor. After you found the correct location where you'll be installing it, then you can use either 3M double-sided adhesive tape, or just use screws to screw it into wall or whatever you have at that location. Tilt it to cover as much room as possible, hook it up once again to power, and then it's time to go to the next step. In the UI, and the UI of the device is available both through the access point, but it's also available through this IP address on your standard network. Click on the hamburger icon and select Site Sense. Let's go to the configuration. There are a couple of things that you must do and all the other options are more or less there for you to play with later on. First thing we need to set up is a maximum, macro and micro range. This is used to define the length of your room. If your room is 4 meters, just put here something like 405 centimeters. Also bear in mind, especially at this initial configuration time, you should match maximum micro with maximum micro range. Whatever the range for the macro is, you should set your micro to that same range. Later on, you may play with those values, but for now, let's keep it as is. What are macro and micro ranges or macro and micro movements? If you see, we have very jumpy macro movements here and small micro movements on this window. Micro means when I walk, when I wave my hands, when I sit down or stand up in the chair, that will be a macro movement, where a large object is making large changes in space. Micro movements, this is breathing, or maybe just you know moving your muscle on the arm or leg, it is a movement, but it's a micro movement. Micro movements are important, especially if, for example, you install this sensor in your office space. You will be more or less sitting. If you are watching YouTube video and you are perfectly still in the chair, you will be still making micro movements. Your eyes will open and close. You will be breathing, maybe you're yawn or something, 
and those are micro movements. If you are watching a football game and your team is losing, you will probably have macro movement. But that's not the point. The point is to distinguish the movements between macro and micro. Next thing that you have to decide is timeout. Timeout is currently set at 300 seconds. You should set it to whatever time you want for the sensor to think that if there is no movement, either macro or micro, to consider the room empty. Default value is 20. Then we have peer sensitivity. One is the lowest sensitivity, three is the highest and also default sensitivity. If you have pets, especially small pets, you may consider reducing it from three to two or even one. But this will depend on the case, where and how you live, who you have with you and do you have pets or not. On the bottom, we also have three buttons. Get configuration. This button is very important because when you open the UI, the UI doesn't load the settings from the board itself. So before you change any values here, you should press get configuration and it will pull the current configuration of the sensor. Then we have factor reset button, which does just that and auto calibration. Auto calibration allows you to create uh, auto calibrated values for the thresholds for both micro and macro movements so that it creates a baseline from where you can start adjusting the sensor values. You can play with the settings and increase or decrease the sensitivity of the sensor and those graphs will help you with that. Wherever the orange line is above the blue line, it means that the sensor will be triggered. So for example, as I'm currently sitting in front of the sensor, I want to make this neutral. I would move slider for the micro for those two regions higher up. And that means that the sensor currently will not be triggered. Well, it would in this case, but if I stand perfectly still, it will not be triggered for the movements I create. The same goes for the micro movements. Wherever this orange line crosses the blue line, we have occupancy or movement that will trigger the sensor. And of course, then we also have values for the temperature and humidity. Bear in mind that those temperature and humidity values plus the light density, which is this one here, is not permanently stored on the device. Each time you unhook the device from the power and hook it up back again, the values will start from zero. Not zero, but from the current values, but you will not be able to see historical values. Okay, but let's look at what we have in Home Assistant and how to integrate it inside our automations. From the controls, we have bed sense, which can be toggled either on and off. Then we have CalSense that allows us to calibrate the device from within Home Assistant. Next, we have RoomSense config, which should load the current configuration inside Home Assistant. We have a ton of ranges, both micro and micro, peer sensor sensitivity. Then we have sensors for the RoomSense brightness, sense distance, sense humidity, sense movement. Sense movement is a critical one. You would expect here a sensor with binary state, present or away, or motion detected or not detected. But actually we have numbers here. Zero represents nobody is currently occupying the space, either no movement, no person sleeping, etc. And two means that there is currently movement, occupancy, breathing or whatever in space. Then we have state for the peer sensor. Is it currently triggered in on and off state? And room sense temperature. Or if we move this to UI, it should look something like this. Room sense movement 2, meaning that there is currently somebody in front of the sensor. Room sense peer, currently at on state, meaning the red. Room sense distance of 129 to 132 centimeters. One thing I didn't mention is room sense movement direction. If I'm walking away, it should read here the state away. And if I'm walking towards the sensor, here you will see towards sensor state, such as, for example, these ones here, away and towards. Temperature, humidity, brightness, bad sense, room sense timeout, and that's it. To use in automations, we would need to use room sense movement and then this unique ID. Create new automation. We need to use a state, room sense movement. When it changes from zero to two, that means that we have trigger detected, motion detected or occupancy in that space. Create an action. 
device turn on the light. That means that when somebody enters the room, the light will turn on and it will stay in that state even if the person is sitting. Let's click Save. To repeat what we've created here, when the room sense movement changes from 0 to 2, we do action turn on the light. And we need to create one additional automation and this automation will be quite opposite. When it changes from 2 to 0, we want to turn off this Elgato light. Save room sense IQ turn off on no movement. And now we have two automations, which actually you can also do with one single automation by using the trigger IDs, but just for the simplicity, I created two separate automations. One will be triggered when there is occupancy in the room, and the other one will be triggered when there is no occupancy. And now the light should automatically turn on when person, or for example, me, enters the room, sits at the desk, works at the desk, the light will be on, and as soon as I leave that space, in 20 seconds, because this is our timeout, which we defined, the light will turn off. And that's pretty much it. Now let's talk about potential issues or things that can maybe be improved with the sensor. As I said, this sensor has still not been officially released, but I hope and as far as I know, it will be very soon. There are a couple of things that can get improved and all those things are based on the firmware. Except one thing, but I know that this is just a temporary case that was 3D printed. I had a lot of light bleeding, meaning that there is a hole on the device that allows device to emit LED light. Currently it is orange or red, but during the night that light was bleeding throughout the case. So the whole case was shining orange. But as I said, I've got a temporary case. This is a 3D printed case and the future or final case will be molded case. So that shouldn't be an issue. At least I hope so. The second problem for me was distance measuring. From time to time, it would get stuck at some values. Not at the exact number, it would move back and forth between a couple of numbers, but it would not, for example, detect when I move my hand toward the sensor. Even if the distance is 20 centimeters, and I can do that either by, you know, shoving my head in the sensor or moving towards the sensor, it would still not detect it and say that I'm half a meter or one meter away. I hope that this thing can be fixed if you have those same issues with the firmware update. Overall, the sensor is working great. I tested it during the sleep and it was 99.9% .9 accurate. Everything else in the sensor works perfectly. I really do like the auto calibration. I think that the dashboards are awesome. And I know a lot of you will be using more of these dashboards, especially during the configuration part, then using the same settings, setting options inside Home Assistant, because this one really visually helps you to set up the sensor perfectly. And the idea to include the temperature, humidity and light sensor, which adds almost nothing to the cost, but improves the gathering of data for your home is really an excellent idea. If priced correctly, Room Sensor Q can be the killer sensor for the occupancy in your DIY smart homes. What are your thoughts about those sensors? Do you have your own preferred sensor? Do you think that something can be improved? Or what is the thing that you don't like about this sensor? I really would like to hear what is your opinion on it. And don't forget, if you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you. And before I wrap up this video, I really want to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, subscribed or commented on my channel. Thank you for all those comments, likes and views. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member. Or go to my merchandise store and buy something there. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.